Charleston has a new daytime resource center for the homeless. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I sit down one-on-one -on -one with We Are Family Executive Director Melissa Moore one-on-one. -on -one. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play Store. Melissa Moore! Hey, Quentin! It's so good to see you! It's always a pleasure to see you. I appreciate it greatly. So here we sit in the All of Us Resource Center here in downtown Charleston. Yes, in all its glory. Yes, yes, yes. And I understand that this has been open for three weeks now. Yes, we are learning a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. What is that one word to describe the center right now? Um, that's a great question. I, I would say inclusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know when you talk about inclusive, the city in Charleston is involved with this, the YWCA right. and MUSC. Absolutely. When you think of those three institutions, what sticks out in your mind? It's just such an interesting collaboration of, of different partners because we have um, the healthcare community, we have the nonprofit community, a municipality, we have local businesses, we have Google, um, we have artists and just the grassroots social justice community yeah. kind of coming together under one roof, so it's really neat. I, to me, I think it is just the most intersectional thing that is happening in Charleston right now. And you talk about need. I understand that this was a dream of yours for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I sort of got bitten by this bug about maybe three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine uh, mentioned that there was this thrift store in Richmond, Virginia called Diversity Thrift, and it was started by the LGBT youth nonprofit there, and that we might look at that. So I became very interested and did a lot of research on Diversity Thrift and then I found um, other thrift stores like uh, Lost and Found Youth in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I sort of I developed a plan and started modeling what we could do in Charleston after successful models in those places right. um, and then this idea grew out of that I originally just wanted to start a resource center for youth um, because so many of our young people that I work with who are LGBT get kicked out of their houses when they come out of the closet, so they don't have any resources when they're homeless. So I wanted to build a homeless resource center just for youth, and then I took it to the mayor, uh, and Mayor Tecklenburg said, we love this idea, we love this plan, but do you know that we have an issue in Charleston where you know people need help, a lot of homeless people need help of all ages, and we need a day center, a resource center for all of them. So we sort of answered that call um, because we want to help our residents of Charleston. I am from Charleston, right. and these are the most vulnerable people in Charleston. And I myself have a homeless experience. I was homeless for a very brief time in my youth. Um, so we rose to the challenge. Wow. Mm -hmm. You talk about challenges by the numbers, by the numbers. When you think of homelessness in the LGBT community and far as homelessness, what plays in your mind? Well, there's just so much. Uh, discrimination against this community and so much hatred. I just think that people don't really understand what it is like to be an LGBT person in the South. There just aren't a lot of resources. We Are Family is the only LGBT youth resource in the entire state of South Carolina. Um, and it's just, what stands out to me is that there's a lack of understanding among service providers about how to serve everyone, including LGBT people, and not exclude this part of the population. Um, people don't even know that they're hurting people and you know being on the street in and of itself is a trauma that sort of compounds over time. The longer you're on the street the more trauma you're likely to experience. And then when you go to a service provider who then re-traumatizes you without even meaning to but um, they don't know necessarily how to be accepting and affirming of LGBT folks. Um, that can be really difficult. So I'm excited to have this center um, which is a good place for everyone because we don't leave anyone out. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you talk about that population. What is the homeless population right now in Charleston, your mind? I see a lot of, so we definitely see a lot of youth in here, but the majority of people that I run into are, they, they just, something went sideways, right? Something happened in life. It's right. very difficult to get a job that pays enough to have people be able to afford rent in, in Charleston. So a lot of people kind of get evicted and once you have an eviction, your credit is ruined and then you're on the street. And then when you're on the street, you know, that causes mental and physical health 
issues. Mm -hmm. um, and there just isn't enough funding for us to address all of the health care and, and mental health care needs of everyone who doesn't have enough money to be able to support themselves through, those, um, through the healing process. So we're really excited here to be able to work collaboratively with all of these different sectors of our community and people experiencing homelessness mm -hmm. to build a robust system. Almost everybody who works here and who has built this center has been homeless at some point. Mm -hmm. So to me, that means that we uh, have a certain expertise around homelessness because we've been there. Yeah, um, and you talk about obviously those services for the homelessness. What other services do they need right now here in this Charleston community? I think just there's a real lack of housing. I mean, we need more um, rapid rehousing, transitional housing, okay. permanent supportive housing, all kinds of, of things. And I think a lot of people don't have consistent access to healthy food. Mm -hmm. There's so many food deserts in Charleston. Okay. And um, I think people don't have access to jobs that can pay them what they need to sustain themselves. We definitely have an opioid issue that's out of control here. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we need more mental health services here. We need to be investing more money in mental health. You talk about money. If you were to sit down with a South Carolina state lawmaker right now, what would you say to them one-on-one? -on -one? I would ask them to put more money into projects that help people get past the things that are keeping them down because a healthier South Carolina is a more productive South Carolina. Okay. A more productive South Carolina is a South Carolina that can compete. So I would say, let's take care of our people. Let's invest more money in social services, which is something that's not very popular with a lot of lawmakers, but it works. You talk about working. Let's talk about the new thrift shop that is actually opening today. I'm excited. If I were to walk through there right now, what would I see? You would see a glorious array of all kinds of vintage digs and furniture yes. and like really weird curiosities, um, treasures, antiques, uh, I would say like housewares. But we have some really good stuff. We've gotten, our donors are amazing. And um, so we have all kinds of treasure that's just right out there and some treasure that's hidden. Yes. So it's yes. super exciting. It's almost like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> I bet it yeah. is. And let me reset and talk about you, sure. Melissa Moore. You're executive director for We Are Family. Yes. When you take off your executive director hat and your advocacy hat, mm -hmm. who is Melissa Moore? Um, I enjoy, I love music. I love to dance. I like going to listen to music. I like to play music. I play the guitar and the bass. Wow. Um, it's been a while since I've actually played, so I wouldn't say I play well. Okay. But I enjoy it. It's very therapeutic for me. Um, I love my family and I enjoy my time with my family. I also enjoy alone time. It's kind of nice when I can just kind of chill out and watch uh, Below Deck Mediterranean. Yeah. <laughs> love Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> I love my reality show. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not popular, but I do like Southern Charm. Oh, yeah. 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 That is so good to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, if I were to come back to you in one year to talk about all of us Resource Center and we are family, you would tell me what? I would tell you that, wow, this program has grown exponentially and we have millions of dollars that grew out of no funding, basically. We built this center with no funding, with support from so many places, though. Let me tell you, I was just surprised to see how many people came together to make this thing happen. So I think in a year, we are going to be bigger, better, better. Um, I think we will, our thrift store will be highly successful. I think we will have housed, um, hopefully, at least half of the people who come in here looking for housing. Um, and we will have helped people find the healing that they need to find. That is so good to hear. I hope so. Well, Melissa Moore, thank you so much for your time. I really, really, really appreciate this. Thank you, Quentin. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Yep, we yeah. do.